Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Should I call you Dr. Bay throughout the whole thing? You don't have to. <laughs> Today we're going to be asking Kat about her PhD at UCLA. So to start off, where did you go to undergrad and where did you go to grad school and what did you study? So I went to the University of Laverne and got my bachelor's in chemistry and then I went to UCLA for my PhD in organic chemistry. So how long does it take to get a PhD? It takes about four and a half to six years. I graduated in four years, but it, it's very dependent on, on what your research is and how much you're able to publish. How much were you able to publish? I got 10 papers. That's oh crazy. my god, that's Double wild. Digit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, how long did it take you to do your master's and then how long did it take you to do your PhD? Oh, so it's cool at UCLA, they're integrated. So the first two years of the PhD, you get your master's, and but that's after you take what's called your orals or candidacy exam. Basically, at the end of your second year, you take this candidacy exam where you come up with your own research proposal and then you present it in front of your committee and at that point they basically decide whether you advance to candidacy where you can continue with your PhD or unfortunately some people don't pass the candidacy exam and that's known as mastering out so then you leave with your master is pretty sad but you still get the masters yeah that's true you get three <laughs> masters so if you want the MS without paying you might as well just go to the PhD and then get the free masters <laughs> Pro tip. <laughs> Wait, so you applied for the PhD mm -hmm. program, but, and you get both? Mm hmm Yeah, it's integrated, which is nice. And the whole program is free? They pay you. For the master's and the PhD? Yeah, they, so they pay for your tuition, and they pay for a stipend for you to either teach, or TA, or do research. So on average, how much did you get a month? Um, when I first started, we got maybe like, a little over 2000 a month, by the, my, end of fourth year they they like increase the stipend each year because of living cost of living so by the end it was like 24 2500 a month which not really bad good. considering <laughs> you're you're just get going to school and getting a degree but living in westwood is expensive oh that's true so like my first year when i was on ucla um grad student housing it was like 1400 a month <gasps> for like my cut of the pay so if you like you know do the math after the stipend you get you don't have that much left yeah after your first year move out so you can get <laughs> cheaper housing does the pay change based off of masters or phd um once you advance to candidacy you get a little more money but it's pretty negligible 50 or 100 dollars more per month it's pretty small for the people who are interested in getting into ucla for their phd or masters do you think grades are the most important? Mm. Do you think work experience or research or extracurricular activities? So for chemistry PhD programs, the order is your research experience is like number one. It's the most important. Research is top priority and then the second is actually letters of rec. So you want to make sure like <laughs> the professors you work for and do research for write you like pretty strong letters of recommendation that highlight like your research skills, the techniques you learn, even if you didn't have a successful project. For undergrads, it's not that important for it to be like five star research. You just have to learn skills. And then after letters of rec, then the third one is actually grades. So it's pretty low on the totem pole and then fourth is GRE scores they don't really care about GRE scores as long as you like don't do poorly I'd say aim for I don't know above 70th percentile that's good enough some schools require the chemistry GRE so you gotta take that too but <clears throat> That's only offered like three times a year, so you just have to plan accordingly and make sure you take it before you apply. What was your GPA in undergrad and then what was around your GRE score? Oh, I don't even remember my GRE score. <laughs> I remember it was like 85th percentile. I don't know That's what- That's pretty good. I don't remember what number. That's but... pretty good. And then my undergrad GPA was a 3.75, but it's not like, horrible oh, but that's they, pretty good they don't, you want to aim for above a 3.5 i think to be competitive at like 
the like top 15 chemistry programs. Oh yeah, also when you take graduate classes in a PhD program, your grades in those classes don't even matter. It's just more of like, make sure your learning skills and oh stuff. Oh my gosh, yeah. I guess that makes sense. Yeah, they don't care about your GPA. When you were applying for your PhD, which other schools did you apply to and which other ones did you get into? So I applied to UC Irvine, UC Santa Barbara, UC Berkeley, Stanford. Oh, and I applied to Harvard just for kicks. Didn't get into Harvard, but you know, I tried. Uh, the other schools I got into were UC Irvine and UC Santa Barbara. Oh, and USC. I forgot if I mentioned that as well, but USC's chemistry program is just so-so, so I didn't <laughs> consider that one. They're not very strong in science. Shot fired. <laughs> I also got into Caltech, I forgot. Did I mention that? No, you didn't. My top two like serious choices were UCLA and UC Irvine because they have really good organic chemistry programs. But after you get into these schools, then you're invited to like an admitted student weekend. <laughs> <laughs> so these admitted student weekends are nice. They invite you to stay um, in a hotel near the campus and then you get to meet all of your other undergrads or students who also got accepted and then they basically just like show you around the lab facilities and then they take you out to nice meals wow. and then they're it's very like wine and dine it's super nice and then that's when you can make like a more holistic decision as to where you want to to go to grad school. This is after you get accepted? After. So only the accepted <coughs> students are invited. So from there, that's where I made uh, my choice on where I wanted to go to grad school after meeting the professors. Because when you apply to a PhD program, you're not really applying to go to that school. You're applying to work for a specific professor. So do you recommend getting a PhD? It takes a long time, but PhD is nice because you're not spending money you don't have to go into debt to get one you're earning money and when you're teaching and doing research you're like gaining skill set so i would recommend it if you don't know what you want to do right after undergrad because it's like a for sure paycheck and you're getting a degree too so it's win-win so i would recommend it but it is a lot of work so tell everyone what you're doing with your degree now. <laughs> <laughs> so right now, I'm an assistant professor at the University of Laverne, my alma mater. Do you think that getting a PhD boosted your salary? A lot of jobs, especially in chemistry, require an advanced degree. So if you only have a bachelor's in chemistry, you tend to like start in like entry level jobs but if you have a PhD you skip that like set of entry level jobs and you're automatically qualified for higher positions that obviously have higher base salaries so with that it's worth it. Is it possible to be a professor without a PhD? Um, no you need at least a master's to teach um, at the collegiate level but to become a professor like a tenure track one you need a PhD. So academic jobs, you need a PhD, but if you want to go into industry, like pharmaceutical industry, having a master's or a bachelor's is okay, but you'll just start at the bottom. Do people generally do postbacs before starting a PhD? Um, some, I wouldn't call it a postback. They do like research assistant jobs. So mm, okay. I think postbacs are like, you take classes, right? Yeah. Yeah, in general, not not many people do postbacs after getting their BS in chemistry. Since there isn't really much class requirement to get into a PhD, it's more like to gain more research experience, they'll become like a research assistant in the lab for a year to gain skills if they didn't do research as an undergrad. There are some people who go into industry first, and from what I've heard from those people, they tend to do that because they they enter into a pharmaceutical company like at the bottom and they want more like power and they want to move up in like the I don't know the ladder <laughs> but you can't do that without a PhD so so for example mm -hmm. an entry level position at a pharma company versus having a PhD and starting more mid level like what is the difference in salary um i think if you're an entry level chemist your starting salary is between like 40 to 50k um, with a bachelor's but then if you have a PhD 
the starting salary would range between like 90 to 120k. What would you say was the highest highlight of your PhD program? I got to go on an internship in Japan, which was yeah. really great. That was a good highlight. And like everything was paid for and they were paying you to do research at a university there, which was nice. I think a low, the first year of the PhD is really hard. Not only are you balancing taking like graduate level classes, you also have to teach. Suddenly you're tasked with teaching three um, discussion sections of 30 students so if you've never taught before and suddenly you're in charge of 90 students it's kind of a lot so you have to teach and you have the stress of finding a research lab if there's any single people out there who are trying to use a master's or PhD program to meet anyone do you think people were able to meet other single people during the PhD program let me just put it this way it's very time intensive <laughs> Unless you find someone who like understands your work schedule because it is pretty wonky. You're getting paid so little to work like 80 hours a week. It's a lot. It's very demanding because yeah. research never sleeps. You always have to be ready. Were you able to make a lot of friends? Yeah, so I would say your first year you want to make uh, or find your like group of friends like that, college yeah basically <laughs> but after your first year if you didn't make those friends it's hard to find other friends outside of the people in your lab at the end of my first year i didn't know if i wanted to continue because it was so stressful second year was hard as well because you're preparing for your candidacy exam it's really just until the second year after that it's it's pretty nice what was your class size if you include biochemistry it was about 90 Without biochemistry, so just like chemistry students, it was like 50. It's so small. It's small, but organic chemistry was like... So I think my cohort started with 20, and then by the time we're at finish, 12 actually finished. So like eight people mastered up. Yeah. Oh. We're gonna take a break to meet Kat's adorable doggo. This is Nugget. Nugget is a multi poo. Mm -hmm. You're so cute! Okay, back to the video. <laughs> so what is one tip that you would give to people who are currently applying? As undergrads? Mm -hmm. um, I would recommend that you reach out to your undergraduate professors and tell them that you're interested in getting a PhD and then starting undergrad research early, like sophomore year. That'd be ideal. <laughs> like all the seniors watching this are like, like holy no, moly. <laughs> if not, if you don't have research experience and you're a senior applying, then I would recommend doing an internship or doing something to gain your research experience. Mm -hmm. So get research experience. Sounds good. This was a super long video. If you watched all the way to the end, thank you so much. I will leave a link down below for Dr. Bay's uh, YouTube channel where you can watch her lectures as well as her Instagram handle. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to drop a comment down below and don't forget to like and subscribe. Yay. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye! Bye.